Hi, it's Greg Harrell here with another Vim screencast. Uh, tonight I'm not going to be talking directly about Vim. I'm going to be talking about keyboards and keyboard customization, which is obviously a pretty important part of one's usage of Vim. Uh, and if you've seen the series before, you know that it's a subject that I have spent quite a bit of time thinking about. Um, so if you want to get a little more context on keyboard related stuff, um, you'll find it throughout. But uh, I guess some of the more important things that you could look at would be uh, way back in episode nine, I talked about Carabina, um, which is a tool that I used to use prior to Sierra um, for doing some pretty dramatic keyboard modifications. Um, then I had an episode on Sierra, that's uh, number 43 there. Um, that describes how Apple broke Carabina and I had to go to great lengths to recreate its functionality using a tool called Hammerspoon. So that's kind of an interesting ex excursion. Um, and then uh, later on, um, episode 59, I introduced Carabina Elements, which is the new version designed to work on Sierra and above, which has been gradually accruing functionality um, and approaching parity with what the old uh, Carabina used to have prior to Sierra. Um, and I think the other potentially interesting keyboard related uh, topic would be the Colmac screencast, uh, episode 41, where I talk about using Colmac in Vim. Um, there are other keyboard related things elsewhere um, in, the, in the list, but th those are the main ones to look at. Um, so let's uh, just dive over to my dot files at this point. Now, if you look in the readme, you'll see that there's a list here of the things that I use Carabina for. Um, things like uh, making caps lock serve as a multi-purpose key so that it, um, in my case, can be backspace when I tap it because in the Colmac layout, caps lock is supposed to be mapped to backspace. Uh, but it can also be corded with another key. Um, I did the same thing on the right-hand side of the keyboard with return. So it's um, return when held or control when corded with another key. Um, I do things like trickily map uh, control I to F6 in Vim, which means for very esoteric reasons that I can map control I and tab independently, which you normally wouldn't be able to do because the terminal already out running inside it sees them as the same key. And that can be pretty useful. Um, things like tapping both shift keys simultaneously to turn caps lock on and off and so on and so forth. I'm not gonna read all of these, uh, but the interesting one which just became possible again is um, with the recent beta version of Carabina, you can have a space FN layer again, which for me is Highly novel. Um, so a space FN layer, for those who might not be familiar with it, is a layer that you activate on the keyboard by holding down the space bar. And while you're holding that space bar down, you can tap other keys and they will serve a completely different function than their normal purpose. So um, an obvious use case for this as a Vim user would be to have H, J, K, and L get mapped to cursor keys whenever uh, space is held down. But really the sky's the limit there. You could do pretty much whatever you want um, in the layer and you could go beyond just having a space layer. You could have as many layers as you want. Um, but in my case, I just use it as space FN. So that recently became possible again. I'm going to show you how. Um, and I'm just going to note here, if I can remember which one of these is the Carabina control panel. You do need a relatively recent version. At the time I'm recording this screencast, uh, this is a beta version. So maybe click the check for beta updates if you don't have it yet. Um, you'll need that in order to get a, a space FN layer working. So let's dive over to the terminal and I will show you uh, what my config currently looks like, um, which is somewhere over here. Uh, this config is a huge JSON file. It's over a thousand lines, as you can see. Um, one of the problems with the space of N layer is the configuration is pretty verbose. So if I just hide that behind a fold, you can see it's over 600 lines just for space of N layer. Um, so this would be pretty tedious to, to walk through. So what I'm actually gonna do is show you the file that I use to generate this file, um, which is a, a JavaScript file. Um, so basically this is a JavaScript file. JavaScript seems like a good language to output JSON, right? Um, basically there's a bunch of functions that I use in here to generate like nested objects. Um, and then at the end of this file, I basically just JSON stringify those objects and print them out to stand it out. And that gives me a config file. And just to show you that, I guess I can actually run it. Uh, so it would be somewhere here. I, I actually just move this. <laughs> um, I thought it was under, somewhere under here. It is there, okay. So let's go 
grab that and run it. Um, you see its sole purpose in life is to output this big blob of JSON, which as we already saw is a thousand lines long. Um, so let's have a look at the contents of this file and how it does its thing. We've got some uh, helper functions here that basically allow me to dry up my config. This simple one enables me to express the notion of mapping from one key to another, um, fairly straightforward. Um, the space fn one uh, is where the meat of this is, and I'll, I'll look at that in a sec. Uh, another simple one that's worth looking at is this swap one. Um, to swap two keys around, you basically, just say you wanted to swap A and B, as you can see here, you basically map A to B and B to A, and you've swapped them. The utility here is, uh, in my case, I can do things like plug in an external keyboard where in the Windows mentality, option and command would be reversed. I can basically swap them the way that I would want as a Mac user. So that's that one. But let's look at how uh, this space FN layer works. Um, the idea here is that uh, we can specify from and to. So actually what I might do is show you how this thing is used. Um, you can see here that uh, we're gonna map B when held down when the space spacebar is held down, uh, B is just going to behave like a spacebar. Um, that can be useful if you decide you want to do a repeated space even while you're holding down the spacebar. Um, then we have H, J, K, and L, uh, which map to up, down, left, and right. Uh, not necessarily in that order <laughs> um, because of the, the Vim movement pattern that we're wanting to follow there. Uh, because I use Colmac, I additionally want to uh, identify the uh, inverted T shape that you would get uh, if you specified the the keys that were in the QWERTY position. This is kind of difficult to explain, but there are eight directional keys here. Um, there's H, J, K, and L, which in Colmac have all actually moved to different places. And then there's the inverted T, which on a QWERTY keyboard would be J, K, L, and I, end up being different keys in Colmac and are therefore available to be mapped in a non-colliding way. Um, so I effectively have two ways that I can move the cursor keys. Um, and I guess one way to show you that would be to uh, go to the web browser here. If I hold down the space bar and uh, you can see there that it looks like I'm pushing up and down and left and right. Uh, oops, uh, I don't know what I pressed there. Uh, but I was actually holding on space and, and doing J, K, L, and I on the, the QWERTY keyboard. Um, and likewise, if I do H um, or J, J and K. This is I'm now pressing the Colmac keys for those, which correspond to Y and N on the QWERTY keyboard. So it's super confusing, but muscle memory makes all things possible. So uh, with that configuration in mind, I, I've got a space FN layer. Um, so let's go back. Let's go back to that and look at how it's actually implemented. Um, so the basic notion here is that, irrespective of what modifiers might be pressed, anytime there's a simultaneous key press um, of the spacebar, one of these target keys that we're wanting to map from, then we're going to do a space FN thing. Um, and the key part that was enabled by the recent beta release of Carabino is we now have these options that enable us to define the semantics of these simultaneous key presses. Um, the key part here is that the keys have to go down in strict order and get released in the opposite order. Um, to see why that is true, you just need to think about how rollover usually works. Uh, normally when you're typing quickly, you do this thing called rollover. So for example, if I was to type, you know, hello there, um, when I'm typing the space between hello and there, it's, it's not that no other keys are being pressed at the same time. There's actually an overlap. Um, and so in practice, what usually would happen is that the O key would still be down at the time I push the space bar. Um, at some later time, I do release the O key and I press the T for the, to start the next word before the space bar has actually been released. And, and pretty much when you, all keys, key presses overlap in this way when you're typing quickly. So what these simultaneous options do is they make sure that the space FN stuff will only kick in if I press the space bar, then press the other key and release the other key before releasing the space bar. I um, mean, in that way you avoid rollover. And so uh, what's gonna happen here is uh, when space is activated, we're going to set a variable, uh, which you'll see further down. But um, once space FN is deactivated, I'm going to unset the variable, which is why you can see it getting set here to zero. Uh, and so if we go down a bit, 
um, you'll see that for each of these special keys that I wanted to map, we are going to set the variable. So this means, for example, if I hold down space and then press H and then release H, at that time, SpaceFN will become activated. This variable will be set to one. And uh, additionally, the, the key code that will be sent on the virtual keyboard will be whatever I map the key to. So in this case, H would be left. So we'll, we have two side effects really. We set a variable and we, we send the real key code. Um, and if we look a little bit further down, down here in the from block, you can see um, where the, uh, the basic mapping occurs whenever SpaceFN is already active. Um, so this is why I can hold space down and then just like mash any of the other keys in the layer and they'll do the right thing automatically because at this point we've got this conditional saying, well, are we in space FN mode already? If we are, then just do the mapping and no other fanciness goes on. Um, so that ends up if we, I think I had this file open already. Yeah, that ends up, like I said, producing this 600 lines of stuff, uh, which would be pretty verbose, as you can see, uh, to type out, but it works remarkably well. Um, so the only other thing that I want to show you here in this file uh, is just briefly uh, how the rest of it all fits together. Uh, so, you know, we have, I use this feature called spread that exists in JavaScript to effectively merge objects together. Um, so from to is going to return an array of configuration items um, and the, the three dots here it's called a spread basically flattens that array into the, into the containing array. So um, I wind up with a list of configuration here. Um, and I also use this spread down here where you can see um, we start with the device defaults. The, the triple dots there basically just copy them into the object um, and then I apply some overrides. So we were able to have a pretty dry non-repetitive config here for my Apple internal keyboard, for my real force external keyboard. Um, you'll see here that, you know, for example, in the real real force, I do a couple of extra mappings because like I said, this is one of those PC keyboards with the modifier keys um, reversed. Um, it also doesn't have a function key like you would have on an Apple laptop. So um, I assign some other modifier key that it has to that. I and mean, likewise, it doesn't have a, a power key like an Apple laptop would, but it does have a kind of useless pause key, you know, on the distant top right that I would never have any reason to press. Um, and the other thing where we're using spread here is, um, is to effectively have a kind of inheritance at the level of overall configuration. We start with a vanilla profile. Um, this is basically equivalent to what you would get if you just launched Caribbean Elements um, and allowed it to write a default config out. Um, so it basically it would map all of the function keys to the so-called consumer key code functionality that Apple has prepared, like for changing the brightness of the screen or controlling iTunes or whatever media player might be playing. Um, so we start with a vanilla profile um, and then I override it down here uh, by spreading it into the default and then coming up with a bunch of overrides. So um, the only real overrides here are, you know, setting up the space FN layer um, and then those other things that I showed you in the re readme, like customizing the behavior of the caps lock key. Uh, so all of that, uh, potentially long-winded way of saying that Carabiner Elements is really coming of age now. Um, can be a little painful to write the configs, but it's also pretty trivial to automate the repetitive elements as, as you've seen here. Um, and it works like a charm. So uh, I think this is probably the last word I'm gonna have on customizing keyboards because I'm in a happy place. Um, and so next time I come back, I think I'll be back in Vimland and uh, talking about just Vim on its own again. So thanks for watching. Uh, if you like this stuff, subscribe and you'll find out when I have more content for you.